friends welcome in the third session of uh, rock art series so in this session uh, i will be uh, discussing on the rock art studies in india distribution of rock art Uh, different types of techniques of manifestation of rock art, uh, early symbolism, and uh, subsequently uh, the rock art of uh, different cultural phases. So, as far as uh, the subcontinent is concerned, uh, uh, India is enormously rich in rock art. legacy and uh, this uh, primeval heritage uh, is has abundantly abundantly encompassed glimpses of cognitive and cultural behaviors of primitive uh, societies that are exemplified in form of rock art which is rather exemplified in uh, different styles and different techniques Uh, throughout India, uh, one of the earliest discoveries of rock art that was made in the world uh, is from India only, and uh, I mean that is uh, that discovery is by Carl Lyell, who discovered rock paintings in Mirza in 1867. uh later uh, various scholars uh, such as uh, jacob burn winston smith fawcett this would uh, albert knox anderson percy brown bosch pp jaspar they discovered and published their data on various uh, rock art sites in india after an independence uh, various scholars such as uh, dr bakankar bob arthur ramani s kapanda sahab sundara sahab paulshin gordon padaya sahab and then matpal ji jacob singh s sundara shankar tiwari and many 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 others including ji rajkumar jd patel sadashiv pradhan ji anil sharma ji op sharma ji of hindi they have enormously contributed in this way as far as uh, distribution of rock art in india is concerned uh, india is one of the richest rock art heritage india has actually uh, rock art heritage in the world uh, across india and africa the distribution of indian rock art is uh, can be divided into northern zone that includes ladakh kashmir and uttarakhand central zone which includes southern uttar pradesh madhya pradesh chhattisgarh western zone which includes gujarat and rajasthan eastern zone which includes uh, jharkhand odisha manipur and many uh, uh, states of seven sisters here rock art in one or the other form has been discovered recently and in the southern zone uh, which includes uh, Actually, parts of uh, Konkan, Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu. So, among all these zones, the sandstone belt of the Vindhyans, Kamors, and the Chambal Basin is considered to be the richest. Most of the depictions that are found in India, uh, they are manifested in uh, using two basic techniques. One is uh, one form is hieroglyphs and the other form is pictograms as far as early symbolic behavior in india is concerned uh the available data suggests that lower paleolithic humans possess considerable uh cognitive abilities and creative urge and suitable skills to appreciate 
the visual qualities and geometrical forms of objects such as crystals uh, and in designing and in, sh in shaping objects like circular discs, uh, creating cupules, uh, in engraving meandering lines by packing techniques, uh, and uh, creating a straight light by line by using a prism. So these evidence they suggest towards uh, advanced cognitive abilities of early hominids. Now, uh, as I told you that India is one of the richest uh, countries that has surviving rock art. And the archaeological evidence of artistic symbolism dates back to earlier Shurian. The earliest uh, circumstantial evidence of symbolism are from Hindu or Hinduism. And from Sidney Kala. Darki Chattan, uh, Dhimbetka, they also uh, possess signatures of early symbolism. Actually, this early form of symbolic behaviors is in a way very scarce. And uh, due to taphonomic reasons, particularly. Since India is a tropical climate and uh, survival of painting in any form and other organic materials uh, such as uh, ivory, bone, wood, antler, uh, it becomes almost impossible to survive. So, whatever evidence we have, they are in they are on stones. Actually. The form of cupules, uh, mineral nodules such as hematite, etc., that uh, indicate towards the artistic abilities or early symbolism. During the uh, late Pleistocene period, the uh, corpus reflecting the symbolic behavior of modern humans in India is somewhat more abundant. The earliest references are in the form of engraved rustic objects. Uh, you all must be aware of that, and also in form of ostrich actual beads. And uh, other uh, objects that are assigned to upper palette. Use of color has been documented from various upper palaeolithic sites. Uh, especially uh, uh, from Dhimbetka Vakankar Sahib on Earth from upper palaeolithic levels, uh, faceted colored nodules that indicates which is an indirect indication of use of colors. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we do not have any uh, figurative specimen of symbolism on stone or on bone pieces. Although this discovery of harpoon at Rohananaga in the uh, testimony is that, uh, that during Upper Paleolithic uh, period, the bone industry was uh, quite advanced. Upper Paleolithic burials from different sites is yet another indication or example uh, that shows the symbolic behavior in one or the other form during late Pleistocene period. From uh, Holocene period onward, the evidence of uh, non-iconic or aniconic uh, and iconic symbolism. Common and they are generally found in 
for multiple pages and in pages on top. A large amount of uh, uh, beats, pendants, and other mobile art objects on bone, antler, stone, etc., have been also reported from uh, different sites in India. In the tribal societies, use of uh, vegetative material such as flowers, seeds, twigs, and other perishable material is used for making necklace, dams, etc., which might have its roots in the extinct cultures. That can be Mesolithic culture also, and that can be other Paleolithic period also. So, uh, for we are uh, are yet to discover such findings in Indian culture. Uh, in Neolithic, Chalcolithic period, uh, during Indus Valley Civilization, Iron Age, a large number of data is available that reflects the symbology of nomadic, semi nomadic, agrarian, and early urban dwellers of the subcontinent. Unfortunately, in India, uh, so far, no serious attempts have been undertaken to understand this symbolic behavior of uh, of past societies which is reflected in form of rock. Now, uh, about rock art of Mesolithic period. So the most salient features of uh, this rock art, which is considered to be rock art of hunter category, they have survived actually uh, throughout the Holocene, uh, the second millennium BC. Rock art of this period is closer to nature, uh, where the themes are more or less related to the life of simple hunting, gathering, dance, or societies. Uh, and uh, in this period, during this period, abstract designs and patterns are, are quite common. The other characteristic feature of rock art of this phase is the naturalistic style of portraiture of animal and the resilient and elegant body movement movements of the thick shaped things which are portrayed at, as hunters uh, dancers a few art objects have been reported from the habitation deposits of this period uh, Generally, Mesolithic surfaces are generally located inside the overhanging cliffs and hills. Gorges, gorge, Pate, uh, Mesa, etc. So, these hunter gatherers, they have manifested their uh, symbolism into different techniques and ways in form of paintings, uh, which is found across Central India, Western India, and parts of South India also, and also in form of engravings and musings. Uh, of course, uh, cup marks of this period are reported from a few sites, but the painting and breathing remains uh, a common trend uh, throughout Mesopotamia. Uh, with the end of Ice Age, around uh, 11,000 years ago, and at the start of Holocene, before, actually, uh, the Earth started witnessing a warmer climate, a humid climate. This led to the increased monsoonal rains and uh, that permitted an extensive spread of moist savanna type vegetation in India, replacing the dry savanna or the arid, arid dry savanna. So, 
this is not only held uh, in extending the forest cover and the grasslands, but has also, I mean, amazingly uh, diversified the life form. Culturally, uh, this phase is known as Mesolithic phase or Mesolithic period, or the stage between the Paleolithic and Neolithic. Due to abundant flora and fauna, hunters thrived in this period. This was the final phase of hunters, just before the Neolithic Revolution. The most Significant feature of this phase is use of a very advanced toolkit. Exemplification of complex and sophisticated art and actually transitioning a process from hunting as a way of life to farming and animal development. During this period, among all the rock art zones or regions, a due emphasis was given to broad and elaborate hunting and gathering, and importance was given to the main subject of it. It can be an animal, or it can be uh, humans involved in different activities. Uh, Hunters equipped with uh, multi barbed arrows, bow, lance, and uh, some holding traps is, are the themes which are commonly seen during this period. Further, animals like monkey, elephant, rhinoceros are also profusely depicted in this phase. Other scenes, including family life, Scenes related to, of course, humans, including family life, dance, as well as digging of rat holes, honey collection, uh, use of digging sticks, traps, fishing nets, uh, foraging and hunting activity, as well as uh, exemplification and portraiture of mythical and defied animals, uh, are seen. And, of course, possibly some ancestral beings is the common subject matter of this period. Some of the portraitures of half human and half animal may be considered to be associated with some sort of uh, mythology or sometimes a mythical animal such as uh, what we see at the end of that mythical goal or uh, animal having uh, a combined animal, a goal or a bison, a mix form. Uh, it reflects a bit meaning which we do not know. Throughout India, depictions uh, belonging to this period, whether they are in the form of hyperloops or pictograms, uh, they generally have uh, a thematic similarity, which is actually quite amazing. And not only that, throughout India, fabulous in styles of portraying animals and human forms is also seen. So it seems that uh, <laughs> there was some common uh, trend which was followed by these kind of people. Depictions of this period are mosaic in nature. Most of the themes are related to life of simple hunting gathering folk. Uh, and many a times abstract designs and patterns are also depicted in different colors. Many a times bifone paintings, uh, in form of bifone paintings or in red or in flat. I would say that uh, Mesolithic paintings or Mesolithic art is geocentric because uh, different varieties of geo 
such as the spotted deer, camel, uh, fox deer, and different varieties of antelope such as gazelle, uh, male rat, phosphorus, hippopotamus. So these species are profusely plentiful uh, during this period. And as I said, uh, the paintings are deer centric, so large herds of deer are commonly depicted in this period. Whereas humans are commonly found involved in hunting and in uh, recreational activities such as dance. Human bodies are generally painted in simple lines or in outlines with uh, a resilient and athletic body movement. Many a times human forms are found adorned with numerous types of headgears and lower body garments, such as uh, lion's cloth. The characteristic feature, feature of uh, the four creatures of this phase uh, is the balance and proportionate bodies, as well as the elegant and dynamic body movements of animals. The Mesolithic folks used various styles to depict motifs, but outline figures with natural body contours and uh, postures was the, a very common style uh, seen throughout India. However, the stylized four creatures are also commonly seen in this. The bodies of most of these painted animal forms in this period were decorated with linear and curvilinear abstract patterns and designs. X-ray depiction portraying organs such as uh, esophagus, windpipe, heart, lungs, intestine, ribs, and at times fetus inside the animal body was one of the important designs of this period that is seen in one or the other forms in most of the negative depictions throughout. In the uh, final Mesolithic phase, animals have lost the dynamism. Uh, they became more static. Uh, the elegance and in the elegance in the movement uh, was also gone in the later phases. But the Somehow, the artist will manage to depict them lively. Just that liveliness was there in the uh, painted forms. Beauty was there as well. These artistic manifestations suggest that these were work of some specialized group of uh, individuals who had executed them properly on some important occasions or events. The defining character of art of this phase is the, are the scenes not only uh, uh, include the essential elements of theme, such as animals and humans, but a due care was taken to make them more realistic and resilient by the application of symmetry proportion to the animal body. Uh, using, I would say, impetus and harmonious brushwork just to make the subject elegant and light. The element of proportion and perspective can be also seen in most of the paintings. Uh, and that was added actually to give a convincing natural look to the entire theme. Because of course, these were not the manifestation of four fates, but the, they were manifesting nature. So the perspective and the natural look was also added.
So in order to give diversity and uh, uh, in, into animal forms, different types of abstract decorative patterns in the animal bodies were given in form of zigzag, in form of arranging pattern, uh, some geometrical forms, uh, etc. This variation was probably given to make the panel more natural, interesting, and to meaningfully justify the theme through graphic narrations. Usually, the variation in the theme was also employed by adding some contrasting geometrical strokes of color, red and white, or using background color of the patina and then uh, using a different color to enhance the entire theme. The contrast was also employed by placing the various elements of geometrical and abstract designs in a set pattern at regular intervals which has in a way helped in making the subject visually organized and uh, to lay emphasis on what is important for the observer or viewer, such contrast was given to the subject. However, at many instances there were Themes, there were subjects which were just portrayed using simple outlines of red and white color. Uh, at many instances, it is seen that many of the painted panels, rock shelters, especially in caves during rock art of Mesolithic period, they have a uh, considerable habitation deposit. Uh, and uh, many a times they contain color modules also, stone tools, bone chapter, uh, floor, floor pavings, burials, steep, charcoal, and many, many, many more things. So rock paintings also tell us how prehistoric man conducted hunting activity, used tools and weapons as well as uh, how he lived in the landscape. So to sum up, I would say that the basic theme of Mesolithic rock art are the animal herds of different species of deer, buffalo, bird, rhinoceros, even Asiatic cheetah is depicted uh, at Ramjiga in Bison, uh, cattle depictions, but cattle depictions it really finds space during this phase. Cattle is in a way missing from Mesolithic, uh, especially in the early Mesolithic period. And uh, Bosborus was most profusely painted, uh, apart other than uh, different species of deer. So. The art of this period is morbidly to very heavily superimposed by the rock paintings of Calculatic and later periods. Uh, the reason for this was perhaps uh, man always preferred such faces for painting, which had a smooth surface and was unaffected by the water seepage, exfoliation, patination, etc. Spacious shelters having lots of floor space was always preferred. Recently, a few direct dating methods have been applied on a few painted depictions of Adanga and a few more sites which have yielded the dates of paintings to about 420 BC. Excavations conducted, conducted by various uh, rock, uh, conducted at various rock shelters, uh, at sites like Modi, Bimbetka, Adanga have yielded hematite notes. Uh, these layers are dated to around 7,500 to 4,000 years before present. Uh, 